In this video I'm going to show you how simple it is to start sculpting realistic rocky surfaces by simply using the planar brush and a messy looking alpha. We'll start things off by drawing a single z-sphere to the canvas and then adding a few additional z-spheres to that. Don't forget that Q is to draw z-spheres, W to move them, E to scale them, and R to rotate them. You can enter z-sketch mode by pressing shift A. Now I'll switch my material to something that looks a little bit more rock-like and then simply start sketching Z-Sketch spheres down onto my Z-Sphere model. You can press the A key to preview the skin that you're going to be producing from these Z-Sketch spheres. During this process I'm just going to be very messy and freeform about this. Draw in some Z-Spheres, then hold the Shift key to smooth them back a bit. Again you can press the W key to start moving these Z-Sketch spheres around and E to scale them up a bit. Once you have a rough form that you like, you're going to convert this into a poly mesh and we can do that here at the top of the tool palette by simply click Make Poly Mesh. If you want to do any additional adjustments to the form of your rock, you can simply use the Move Brush to start pulling and pushing some of the form around. When you're ready to start sculpting, all you need to do is switch to the planar brush and choose a messy looking alpha. This can be any alpha of dots or cracks, just something that doesn't have straight edges to it. And one last thing you can do before you actually start carving into this is take a look at your mesh and see kind of where the ledges are, where the folds of these z-spheres have been created, and then just kind of follow those contours here with the planar brush and your alpha. One thing you should take notice of is when I converted my Z-Sketch into a poly mesh, I didn't divide the model. And for this specific Z-Sketch, my model turned out to be about 11,000 polygons. That's a nice low resolution starting point to work with. It kind of makes working with the planar brush and this messy alpha a little bit more forgiving. And once I've sculpted away all the roundness of the Z-Sketch spheres, I'll then divide my model, which will kind of round things off and smooth out the edges a little bit more. And now that I have divided things up to a second subdivision level, you'll see that I'll take a second pass at all those surfaces, again with the planar brush. But you'll see that my alpha has much, much more of an effect in those fine detail areas because we do have more resolution to work with in our model. And once I'm done sculpting with the planar brush, I'm really going to bring some realistic details to this model by using the surface noise. To activate this, I'll go over to the tool palette, go down to the surface submenu, and then click noise. Now, when you activate noise, it doesn't really matter what the resolution of your model is because this noise is just on the surface whether you're working with low poly or high polygon models. When we click apply to mesh, we're going to have to have enough resolution in our mesh to get that detail of the noise down into the model. But for right now, you just want to adjust your surface noise size and strength and you can adjust the graph to get different styles of noise. The amount of surface types that you can create with the noise feature is pretty much endless. Everything from rocky surfaces to stucco to chipped wood. It really is easy to get lost here inside the noise graph, just adjusting it, finding different types of noise that you can create. And as I mentioned, when you're ready, you can click Apply to Mesh, which is just here at the bottom of the surface palette, which will then project that noise directly into the mesh itself. So once you've projected this noise directly into the polygons of the mesh, you'll notice that the noise button has been turned off and you can actually turn that back on and then reproject an additional layer of noise on top of that. You can change your strength and your size. You can also change the graph and then find a different style of noise. So you'll notice that the first noise type that I projected into this rock was kind of a very fine grainy detail. And when I do this second pass of noise, I'm looking for big clumpy jagged cuts into the surface. Once I've found that by adjusting the graph, I can project that detail into the surface as well. 